It's a new morning in Tehran and time for another outing for the Encore team, where we discover more Iranian culture. Long considered as the country of ayatollahs and suspected nuclear weapons, Iran is slowly moving towards re-engaging with the West after years of sanctions. So as diplomatic and economic relations improve, what does it mean for the world of culture? Today we explore art and cinema. Iran's film industry is known around the world for its quality, but also for the controversy it causes at home. After making dramas about the challenges of life here, Jaffa Panahi fell foul of the government, which threatened him with imprisonment, prevented him from traveling, and banned him from making films for 20 years. The actress Gold Shifty Farah Ani has become a star in France since being forced to flee Iran because she appeared on the red carpet for Body of Lies without her veil. One of Iranian cinema's ambassadors is Payman Moadi. <coughs> We find him on the set of his new film, Life and a Day. Makeup and the custom and the location does 50% of the job. Sit back and, and win the award. See, it's easy. It is. <laughs> but not everyone knows that. Payman Moadi plays a recovering drug addict trying to get his brother off crystal meth in the film by a 26-year-old first-time director. In our film, we wanted to stay as close to the reality as possible. That's what I haven't seen in other films. And regarding drugs, it's actually not such a tricky topic. It's something we find quite easy to talk about in Iranian cinema. Payman Moadi is a star in Iran. In 2011, he was in the Oscar-winning film, A Separation. You stop acting up, they'll transfer you. Since then, he's appeared alongside you know Kristen that, right? Stewart in Camp X-Ray, among other Hollywood productions. His success hasn't gone to his head, though, and he invited us to his home where he lives with his family, like a regular guy. With the Oscar-winning film A Separation, you gained worldwide acclaim. How did your life change after that? At that moment, you, you may think that that's the, the goal of your life, but when you're there, you like to do something you know, bigger. It doesn't mean receiving bigger awards. It means to tell some, some more stories to the people. Now I'm a totally different person after uh, all those years, not only those awards doing three, four films, and all of those, I was very lucky that every single of those movies became very successful. You stop acting up, they'll transfer you. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. You don't care. It's those guys who don't care, Blondie. You know, they don't care about anything, just the things that make their life easier. Hollywood has come calling. You've been in a film with Kristen Stewart, with Clive Owen and Morgan Freeman. How does Hollywood compare with films in Iran, making films in Iran? I didn't see a big difference as an actor. As an actor, you have to act, you know, the role that you're given to. But uh, there are some differences, which it, it, it's about the, the society you're living in. It's not the cinema you're working in. Like what then? Tell us about these differences. Hollywood is a different thing. You, you work there as an employee. I don't enjoy that much, you know, working as an employee. But I do some movies, which I, I'm looking for doing some other movies there as well. But that is not my passion. I 
feel very much as an Iranian storyteller. I know how to tell Iranian stories. Do you feel as a screenwriter you can write whatever you like in Iran? There are some difficulties, definitely. There are, of course, there are some red lines and there are some hurdles that you have to overcome. But after being here, for, for example, after 15 years of writing stories, you know how to write them. Censorship, for me, was always a good cause to being more creative. Would you never be tempted, though, to go somewhere else where you could be completely free? You know, I was tempted, and I went, and I searched, and I worked. Now I feel everywhere is the same thing. You cannot do whatever you want to do in any country. And I don't know, I'm not tempted. I sometimes get tired of being... Uh, you know, ignored or something like that because of being in both climates, for example, working in Hollywood and coming back here has some costs that I have to pay. Uh, you have to fight more, you have to spend more energy. I'm still young for doing that. I don't know about years later. It seems like Iran is opening up to the rest of the world. How do you see the future in general in Iran and in the cinema industry? I'm very happy to see this. I'm very optimistic and I'm looking forward to see the better days. Uh, when the doors will be open to the West, I'm sure that the, 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 the people will, would love to participate in doing movies in Iran because they have beautiful stories here. And I'm sure that a lot of people here will, would love to go there and do doing movies over there too. So uh, I think it's, it's a very good sign for Iranian cinema. Looking at parts of the city, you can see that Iran is one of the world's oldest civilizations. What's perhaps surprising, though, is the amount of contemporary art here. It spills out onto the streets. Tell me a little bit about this place, where we are. We're in Tehran's Contemporary Art Museum. It was built in 1977 by Kamran Diba, one of Iran's best-known architects. He was from the same family as the former queen, Farah Diba. This museum houses a wealth of Iranian and European treasures. Their combined value is estimated at between two and a half and five billion dollars. So whose work is on show here at the moment? These are works by Faraday Lashai. She was born in Rasht in 1944. As well as being a painter, she was also a translator, a poet and a writer. That's what I love about her. She was a strong personality. The place of women is a theme that Homer revisits regularly in her creations. And you can see her Western influences, that of Dali and Magritte. She's been painting since she was five and has shown her work in Germany, Belgium and the UK. As an artist, it's hard to show your work in public and it's even harder for women. And if you express an opinion on cultural, social or political issues, you expose yourself to even greater problems. So you need to find a way to stay yourself without self-censoring. And that's the crucial thing. Dotted around the exhibition are works from the biggest collection of modern Western masterpieces outside Europe and North America. It was put together by the former queen of Iran, Farah Pahlavi. When she fled with the Shah during the 1979 revolution, 
the 1500 works were condemned to the basement. With major works hidden in the vaults of this museum, Iran is sitting on a gold mine of modern art. And as the country lurches towards re-engaging with the rest of the world after years of sanctions, a resurrection of this amazing collection is possible. A war hole on the wall could go far in changing the perceptions of a country and its policies. In a state where bars, nightclubs and drinking alcohol are banned, art is also a big part of the social scene. Hello, I'm Eve. Young people like Tamine scanned for the newest art exhibitions on the internet before arranging Friday night rendezvous with friends. In galleries we feel free. Um, actually in all kinds of arts we feel free. That's why many young people are interested in art because they can um, have the freedom they don't have in their real life, in their imaginations and their art. This is Martin Parr's first exhibition in Tehran. But Tamine can't meet the British artist as he couldn't get a visa for the opening. In Fekmikanam to Las Vegas hastish, ina mashinaye omaran ke Amerika ya khali alaqe ziyadi behishun daran. The exhibition was a challenge to put together. Selecting the work was, uh, I shouldn't say difficult, but it was challenging. By some of uh, the best work that Martin has done has been on the beach. So we had to show work that did not uh, offend, um, you know, the laws of Islam or, or um, the authorities here. Tehran is definitely not like I thought it would be. There's so much culture here and the country is slowly opening up. And who knows, perhaps art will be the bridge between Iran and the rest of the world.